Hello children, how are you all? I hope you all are healing hearty, you all are fit and fine. My name is Tanya Sharma. I welcome you all to this Ignite Batch for Class 10 Board in Pure English. We are starting with another economics chapter that is globalization. With this, we'll complete our globalization in one shot and we'll be left with one more chapter that is consumer rights. Let's get started without, without wasting any time and the chapter name is globalization. Let us see what all we'll completing in this chapter. We'll start with globalization. What does globalization mean? What is the definition of globalization? We'll understand the factors that enable globalization. Then we'll understand how the countries are interconnected, how the multinational corporations are built. Then we'll understand what are the trade barriers and with the barriers which are given by the government of the particular country and we'll understand what are the World Trade Organization. Let's get started with a simple example when we understand about consumers. At the end of the day, we all are consumers. We consume things, we consume some of the goods and services which we see in and around us. So as consumers in today's world, when we see today's world, some of us, now here, the NCRT clearly lays down, clearly writes it, uh, clearly has written and give us a word that is some of us. Now here, the NCRT is not using the word all of us. Keeping in mind what you have done in class 9th, keeping in mind a lot of things of, uh, related to our country, the poverty as challenge, the food security, we understand that consumers and as we, some of us has a wide variety of choice. Whenever we go to the market, a simple product can have a lot of brands, right? So we all have like some of us, I will again uh, repeat this word that is some of us, not all of us has a wide variety of choice when we talk about choice which means that one simple product or a random product may have a lot of brands available if we talk about only oil oil that we use for cooking also has a lot of brands right so that is called we all have choice and choice comes from variety because a lot of variety is available and it is not because only for good. It is also it is also regarding to the services. Even the services, if you see education platforms, you might have a lot of choices, right? Some of you might have a lot of choices, correct? Now, when we talk about why and how we got a lot of choices, a lot of variety is when we are stating back or when we are going back to the era where our grandparents were there, where we were not there, right? So at that moment of time, the markets were not like those which we see today. So the modern markets and the market which were available when there were grandfathers and great grandfathers and great grandmother were there. So we will tend to say that the markets have transformed. Yes or no? All right. When we say the markets have transformed, we would like to say such variety of goods and ranging choices of goods in our markets is a recent phenomena. So you might have seen, you might have, uh, you know, you have experience of all the markets, but this is a recent phenomena. Recent, we might say recent because it was not there a lot of years before or some of the years before. You wouldn't have found such a wide variety of goods in Indian markets even two decades back. In a matter of years, our markets have been transformed. They have transformed. Earlier, we do not have a lot of varieties. But now we have a lot of varieties. We have a lot of brands. Right? So when we go to the market, when we go to the various grocery stores, when we go to various brands, we go to malls, there is not one particular brand is available. We have a lot of brands. Gone are the days when definitely the cars are also transformed, the brands of the cars are also transformed. Earlier there were only Fiat and motor car available, only Fiat and uh, you know, uh, simple brand cars available. Now you name the mall, you all know how many car brands are available. Right. So in that case, what do we, what are we concluding here is we have choices because of the variety, 
because the this particular reason i'm re analyzing the entire situation because the markets have transformed it and it is a recent phenomena okay now we are stating that why it had it had happened why all these things have changed why there is a variety available why the question comes why reason because earlier the production had production happened in the entire country that is we call the production happened in as domestic production the production happened domestically but now the domestic all right but now all right my dear students they are not talking about factors here oh all right so now the question arises how the markets transformed or you might say why the markets have transformed now we have two questions with us how and why but here we are talking about two things and right now we have understood two three things first of all we understand that as consumers we are consumers and as consumers we have choices choices for what choices regarding we have choices regarding goods and services goods and services we have choices regarding goods and services right and the choices are of great variety the choices are of a great variety and the choices are of a great variety how this happened and why this happened this happened because this happened because earlier now they are talking about history so earlier okay so earlier what happened so the production when we talk about production it happened domestically it happened domestically which means like it had uh, it was only happening inside the country inside a particular country what does this mean happening inside a particular country the production was happening inside a particular country but now because of a wide variety of choice because of the wide variety of choice what had happened now the production have happened outside the country which means the production was happening globally how do we say the production was happening because the production was happening a production has started happening all over the world all over the world which means we say globally all over the world which means we say the production started happening globally that is the reason that is the particular reason why that is the particular reason why and how we got a lot of variety we got a lot of you know choices regarding goods and services is that clear my dear students all right you might have a look at the mapping of the chapter okay now because the production started happening across the countries what cross the boundaries of these countries were what started crossing were the raw materials food stuff finished products now they started happening inside and outside the country which means two things come to our rescue by which we say import and we say export so import is things which we take from the other country okay we take from foreign country take from any foreign country foreign means international export which we give to the foreign country export means which we give to the foreign country is that clear so now 
colonies such as india now because india was a colony india was a british colony which means the britishers were there at the time when the production started when the production across the country started so india was a colony of british india was a british colony so what happened exported raw materials exported means give giving raw materials to the international company international uh, foreign country and food stuff imported finished goods imported means taking them finished goods taking from the foreign country so this has happened in india when india was a british colony and this happened a wide variety of choice and brands a lot of you know food stuff a lot of brands a lot of choice a lot of variety happened due to this all right is this clear up till now now we talk about a very important phenomena which happened this was only happened this happened because this happened because all right so this happened because okay now why this happened this only happened because and who was responsible for the you know give and take of the products and services so hereby we talk about the multinational corporations now when we talk about mncs so all my friends and all my students are always confused mnc means multinational companies no mncs means or by literal term it means multinational corporations okay so what does it mean it means multi or sometimes we say multi national corporations so multinational because of the efforts of multinational corporations it was possible multinational uh oh okay corporations it was only possible because of multinational corporations that the flow of good of the domestic country and of the international country was possible how ma'am how how it was possible because multinational corporation as we say multinational it is not it is not of a particular country it has its sources it has its you know income from the multi multinationals or we say multiple countries that is why multinational was an important component multinational corporation was an important component of globalization all right let's understand first and then we'll come back to this so what is an mnc what is mnc multinational company multinational corporation is a company i hope now it is more clear multinational corporation is a company that owns and controls the production in more than one nation so you might you know just imagine how big and immense the production of mnc and how big and immense is the power and how big and immense is the money value of an mnc so it's an it has an immense immense means very big immense power immense power immense money and immense control okay in more than one nation it sets up office and factories for production in regions where they can get cheap labor so mnc is a very sharp minded company what does it do it does okay let us Uh, have a very small example i will give you example also which is taken from your book but let's understand an important and very simple example so what happens now we have to make sure that mnc is a very 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 sharp minded company so what does mnc do because mnc the sole objective of mnc is to earn profit what is the objective of mnc to earn a lot of profits to earn profits to earn profits what does an mnc do 
MNC is a brand, for example. Okay, so MNC sets up factories, you know, because MNC has MNC will not work. MNC will make other people work and will earn with their and with earn with their hard work with their work. So MNC sets up office, factories, buildings, wherever MNC find where MNC find a lot of labor, a lot of cheap market. Okay, so these are the factors whereby MNC finds oh, okay now the MNC is finding a lot of land a lot of labor a lot of cheap labor I would like to say labor which is divided into two skilled and unskilled labor MNC will find markets whereby the MNC can sell out the products right and with all this outsourcing MNC will gain all the profit because MNC is finding very, 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 very cheap, very, 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 very cheap factors of production. Now, all the profit will come to MNC, but MNC have outsourced it very locally, on a very local ground, on a very basic ground. So, all the profit will get into the pockets of MNC. So, MNC has huge power, huge money and huge control. Okay. So, uh, other resources this has done that the cost of production because the cost of production should be low and all the profit should get into the hands of MNC and the MNC can earn greater profit it is the sole objective of MNC the sole objective of MNC is to earn great profit okay let us see with an example okay here let us see example spreading of production by an MNC so MNC is spreading a production a large MNC producing industrial equipment. What is an MNC doing here? Of course, MNC is a large MNC. Okay, let us see what is doing. MNC want to produce industrial. What is the MNC producing here? MNC is producing industrial equipment. All right, MNC is producing industrial equipment. Okay, design its products in research center in US. Now actually the MNC want to produce at industrial equipment okay now where the designing is happening the designing is happening the designing is happening in US which means the United States now manufacturing now the manufacturing is happening you see it's not one place where a lot of things are happening different places outsourcing is happening MNC want to produce industrial equipment. Designing is done in USA. Manufacturing is done in China. Manufacturing is done in China because here they can find cheap labor. Best designing can happen in US at low cost. Best manufacturing can happen in China at low cost. Now what is? Let us see. These are then shipped to Mexico and Eastern Europe. And why? Because they have a world market. Okay. Where are they shipped? They are shipped to Mexico. They are shipped to Mexico and Eastern Europe. And Eastern Europe. Okay. Because they have particular great market. That is why they are shipped to Mexico and Eastern Europe. Okay, sold over the world. Hereby, because this is the great market, they are sold over all over the world. Now, meanwhile, the company's customer care is carried out through call centers in India. So now, what happens? Company's customer care. Company's customer care. like we would like to say call centers is in India because India provides cheap labor, skilled and unskilled both. Right. So now MNC is earning how? MNC is finding a lot of places where cheap things are happening. Not cheap, like at low cost. Cheap here means low cost. Low cost things are happening. Low cost designing happens in US. Low cost manufacturing happens in China. Low cost market is in uh, Mexico and Eastern Europe and India provides low cost labor. 
whether it's uh, skilled labor unskilled educated people people in english uh, people in Indi uh, people in india have a good command over their english right so they can converse with indians as well with the internationals because they have good command over english and they are brainy as well so india provides cheap labor because india has a very good population right so in that case now what happens here now MNC has all the profits because MNC has done the production in low cost. And why India is always chosen as customer care. You might have seen good government. People who live in Delhi, people who live in India, definitely we all live in India. People who live in Bangalore, people who live in uh, good government, Delhi, nearby Delhi, Noida. You might find big, big buildings in Bombay, big, big buildings. And those buildings provide customer care for the mncs they work for mncs why they work for mncs because india provides good skilled labor educated labor so that those labor those people can converse with other people like internationals in english and have a good command over english right so now question arises why india provides the best location we will come to this but here what happened let us see MNC is not only selling its finished products globally. Finished products are sold all over the world. It was designed in US, manufactured in China, had customer care in India, shipped in Mexico and Eastern Europe, but sold all over the world. And all the profits are inside the pockets of MNC. So MNC is not only selling its finished product globally, but more important, goods and services are produced globally. They are produced globally, so they are sold globally. Okay, as a result, production is orga organized in increasing complex ways. Production is organized globally. I would like to say production is also organized globally. Okay, all right. Now, why India provides a good location? Reason. Now, this is the answer for your question as well. India has highly skilled engineers. India has highly skilled labor. So, India's highly skilled engineers, first of all. First point. Okay. Who can understand the technical aspects of the production? It also has educated English speaking youth who can provide customer care services and all this probably can mean 50 to 60 percent cost saving for an mnc so mnc sees india is the best location to find a lot of labor which is skilled and unskilled so let us make india as a customer care country okay so the advantage of spreading out production across the borders to the multinationals can be truly immense. So it is a very big production scale. Okay. So India provides always the best location. Okay. Now how the, now we know because interlinking of production is happening. Because it is. Now when we come to this particular part. So what is happening here? MNC, MNC has binded, okay, MNC is binding all the countries together. So, which means the countries are interlinked now. The countries has, the countries of connection, they are not now individuals, they are globally producing units of MNC. So, they are also linked somehow, okay. So, let us see now how the interlinking of production is happening. So, MNC is the, you can say, MNC is the center part. Okay, MNC is the core. And all the countries are connecting. And all the countries are connected only by an MNC. Right? Okay. Let us see now here. Okay. So, MNC is set up production where it is close to the markets. Now, these are the production factors for an MNC. Okay. These are the production factors for an MNC. Okay. Okay. Now, the MNC sees a lot of factors. Okay. Let us see what are the factors. Let us see the factors, how it interlinks. First, 
it set up the market first it sees where are the close markets where are the best markets so it set up this production unit where the markets are close cheek all right so these are close to the markets it set up this production unit close to the markets then they find various labor and labor is also divided into two whereby one is called skilled labor and the other one is called unskilled labor other factors other factors like land labor capital everything will be in low cost or by or the other word we say cheap okay so everything will be low cost now let us come and read this okay so mnc set up a production where it is close to the market where there is skilled and unskilled labor available at low cost where the availability of other factors of production is assured then in addition mnc might look for government policies that look after the interest so every country has its own government right so every country has its own government so they also look for the easiest policy of the government whereby the government is with the mnc not not against the mnc the government should like work with the mnc not the government should not work against the mnc okay so now here by we come to a part where mnc look for other factors and policies and where country where government of countries favor mnc okay and all these things and all these things are at low cost perfectly fine all right now let us see what is our chapter offering us now how does the mnc does everything how does mnc does first of all mnc is investing mnc invest now what when are we when we are spending money when we are investing our time when give we, when we are giving our time to someone when giving our time to study when we are giving our money for anything what we are doing we are investing that is on you you are investing in good or you are investing in bad that is completely on you but what are we doing we are investing so the mnc invest how mnc set up factories and offices for production mnc set up factories mnc set up factories and offices for production the money here we talking about the money the money okay the money that is spent to buy assets the money that is spent to buy assets such as land anything which is valuable land building machines and other equipments is called investment so when an mnc does this investment ma'am this is simple like we also do this investment right but what is the difference between the mnc and our investment is when the mnc does this investment this investment is known as foreign investment okay so mnc made by uh, investment made by mnc is also called foreign investment any investment is made with the hope that these asset will earn profit definitely when mnc is doing any investment the sole objective is to earn the profits the sole objective of an mnc is to earn profit by giving by doing production at a low cost and doing it globally i hope this is pretty much clear to you okay now how does and the mnc does it by various ways okay second procedure is okay we'll say first is investing second is by setting up production jointly it sees somewhere it sees in some countries like some countries are already flourishing some countries are already developed some countries have good production going on there in uh, in their domestic country so what does the mnc do because mnc has to earn profit every time 
so mnc will go and do the partnership will shake hands with the other countries particular production unit and then will run the unit jointly will run the unit jointly okay mnc set up jointly set up production jointly with some of the local companies local means what is the meaning of local any country which has any country which has the production done domestically production done domestically perfectly fine all right so the benefits to the local company of such joint production is twofold now ma'am how will the mnc earn profit mnc will also earn profit that local company will also earn profit okay so mnc will earn profit how because mnc to always want to earn profit so mnc can provide money what does an mnc do mnc provides money for the additional investment like buying new machines for faster production second mnc might bring latest technology like latest technology when well, mnc investing more why because mnc can see the future mnc can see that this particular production unit or this particular local company local company has that worth and investing on that worthwhile i mean investing on that company is a worthwhile situation right so mnc invest a lot mnc invest a lot and sees that production can be happen in a good way so what happens then because of the latest technology it is a two way benefit mnc earns the profit and the second country of the local uh, local company earns technological advancement earns the resources earns machines investment in capital it earns capital okay let us see what other mnc does so let us see an example so cargill food was a large american mnc definitely it's a large american company or american uh, multi uh, multinational corporation has bought over smaller indian companies now india company such as parak food parak food was also having a lot of uh, it was a food brand in india and was flourishing but mnc wants to earn profit now when it enters india it sees parak food is already having a lot of profit so parak food has built a marketing network in various part of india where it is brand where is well reputed brand also parak food has four oil refineries whose control has now shifted to cargill now what happened it was already flourishing it was already flourishing so now mnc came here uh cargill foods came in delhi uh, came in india and said that i am giving a lot of technological advancement i am giving a lot of money you need to make a joint venture with me you need to join hands with me and it will be a benefit for you because i will provide you with good technology i will provide you with a lot of investment and you can do global business you are already doing good in india you can do global business if you if you join hands with me then only you will flourish so now parak food is now under the cargill foods so cargill is now the largest producer of edible oil in india with capacity to make 5 million pouches daily not weekly daily okay now this another way how mnc earns now mnc earns whereby it sees that there are so many local the, uh, mnc is local producers producing a lot of things now production is done locally only but the local producers give all the material to mnc and mnc put a brand name on the top and it is sell it is sold under the name of mnc that is the brand but it, it is made by the local producers this is how mnc earn the profit so large mncs in developed countries place order for production with smaller producers which which product ma'am it can be garment it can be footwear it can be sports item examples of industries where produce production is carried out by large number of small producers around the world now we are you know very smart and we wear good branded clothes we want to buy clothes from your uh, mama no no i want to wear only bland, branded clothes but but my students but my students are fool 
how how we are fools because that product is made in here only but it is sold in the name of a brand this is how mnc works yes okay so small producers around the world the products are supplied to the mncs which are then sell which are then sold in their own brand name to the customers and customers think oh this is from a particular brand but that particular brand is that particular cloth is made or produced by a local producer so here the example says women at home in ludhiana ludhiana is in uh, ludhiana is in india punjab okay making footballs for large mnc they are making footballs but they are under the mnc they are sold they will be sold in the mnc nobody will know that it uh, it was produced in a local home of ludhiana nobody will know okay all right so now when we trade okay children so when we trade this is definitely known as this is a trade this is business going on and this business is known as foreign trade this business is known as foreign trade so foreign trade also creates an opportunity for the producers to reach beyond the domestic market that is markets of their own country so if i'm a local producer i if i don't have mnc i will be for my life doing production inside my country only okay if i am a producer my or my all generation like i will my children then my great grandchildren they will be doing production in in particular area only right but if i will shook my hands with mnc but but if i will shook my hands or if mnc uh, come here come in my area in my unit and do does a lot of investment so i will be upgraded i will be upgraded and i will have a lot of opportunities i will not only trade in my country but i'll trade globally when i'm trading globally it will open a lot of opportunities for me and this will only happen because of an mnc so children if you have doubt up till now you can write in the comment section okay all right now producers can sell the produce not only in the markets located within the country but they can also compete in the markets around the country which is we can trade also globally if you are producing okay it's not only mnc we can also do that but we have to we need to join hands with an mnc or an mnc should come to our production unit and should make some changes okay but can also compete in the markets okay compete in the markets located in other countries of the world i hope this is pretty much clear now now we are coming to the definition of what is globalization after understanding a lot of things now we'll understand what is globalization so globalization is the process of rapid integration it is rapid integration integration means a lot of things are integrating they're coming together or interconnection between countries where countries have connections a lot of countries are connected a lot of countries are interlinked they are joined okay mncs are playing a major role now mnc has played a major role because of multinational corporation companies we can do a lot of things more and more goods and services investment and technology are moving between countries okay now they are having between countries not only one country is doing not uh, in the particular domestic country we are doing but countries have joined hands okay i hope this globalization definition is much pretty more much clear now what are the main major two factors when we talk about the factors of globalization when we talk about the factors of globalization we talk about two factors and the two factors are as follows one is definitely the technology because of highest technology things are pretty much easier to do they are pretty much faster to do we feel more upgraded 
we feel more upgraded and things are very much efficient similarly the other part we talk about is the other part we talk about is inter information and communication technology and our hands of applaud goes to internet facilities okay all right so the even more remarkable has been the development okay where is internet technology we know okay now we are talking about information technology so remarkable have been developments of information and communication technology in recent times technology in the areas of telecommunication computers internet has been changing rapidly telecommunication facilities telegraph uh, telephone including mobile phones fax are used to contact each other around the world to contact information now these is this uh, is also i would like to say the older version of your book but now we have internet and we can connect anywhere in the world we can connect through video calls and what not we guys are updated nowadays sitting in india i can talk to anyone in the, around the world we can talk to anyone in around the world we can have a video call a video conference we can have a video call even we can chat anywhere right so this is the beautiful thing about internet and information technology com information communication technology okay now the last part we are talking about here is okay the last part here we are talking about two things okay let us understand now what is the last part talking about first of all what happened was see when we talk about the historical historical past when we talk about history so uh, when we talk about history a lot of things in history we see it was not simple as it is today why because when india was a colony of britishers right when we were a colony of british we were british india what happened then when we were a colony of british and we were called as british india a lot of things because india's a lot of resources were exported and only the finished product came in the came or we say exported in india a lot of things were imported a lot of things were exported sorry a lot of things were exported and finished products were imported which means our resources were getting wasted we were exploited when we were under the control of britishers so the government okay so this is we are talking about history so the government decide and when we were independent when india was independent when india was truly independent the government decided the government of india decided that will put a trade barrier will put some barriers now what are barriers you have seen when you must be going that police barriers are there okay like this is a barrier a fence is here so we will not trespass this friend fence okay so barrier barrier is a fence whereby if the barrier is here you cannot go this side you cannot go this side i am coming from a there is a barrier here i will not go this side okay i will not go this side because a barrier was there so government of india decided to put a trade barrier to put a trade barrier why to preserve so that the producers reason what was the reason so that the producers what was the reason so that the producers producers should be ready should be ready producer producer should be ready okay inside the country because they were under the british control now they are independent they should be 
दे शुड वर्क ऑन देयर यू नो प्रोडक्शन द प्रोड्यूसर शुड बी रेडी दे शुड वर्क प्रोड्यूसर शुड वर्क ऑन द प्रोडक्शन on their production the producers should work on their production so when the producers worked on their production after some time after some time now what is the trade barrier through trade barriers what happened through trade barriers now there was a limit there was a limit on what there was a limit on exports there was a limit on exports and some tax was applied some tax was applied on imports this is a trade barrier this is a trade barrier so now should work on their production producers of india should work on their productions now what happened when the government of india now here the government of india here the government of india thought the government of the thought that india the producers of india are now ready the producers of india are ready the producers of india are ready for what ma'am to compete to compete with the producers of other country compete with the producers globally globally as in of different countries so now government of india removed the trade barrier government of india removed the trade barrier and this removal of trade barrier this removal of trade barrier this removal of trade barrier is known as liberalization liberalization okay this is known as liberalization all right i hope this is pretty much clear to you here restriction set by the government now these are also known as restriction trade barrier is also known as restriction restriction set by the government to increase or decrease or regulate the foreign trade is called trade barrier increase and decrease now what is increase increasing export decreasing export increasing import decreasing import okay it is in the hands of the government due to the following reason the indian government put barriers to the foreign trade and foreign investment after independence the indian government wanted the domestic producers to face global competition second point by this competition the indian producers will also get a chance to improve their qualities okay now they thought that our now they thought that our producers are ready to compete in the market to ready to compete globally to ready to complete compete with other countries so removal of trade barrier will allow the producers of different countries to trade with india and india will also be benefit monetary okay now the question comes what is world trade organization so the main aim is world trade organization is to liberalize the international trade okay liberalize the inter we also call this as wto or world trade organization the various functions of world trade organizations are as follows let us see it makes rules regarding the international trade and checks that the rules are followed rules are followed it makes rules so what does a world trade organization does world trade organization is an organization okay that checks the international trade or we say w t o 
डब्ल्यू टी ओ चेक्स द इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड मेक्स रूल्स शेक्स द रूल्स ओके वर्ल्ड ट्रेड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वर्ल्ड ट्रेड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सेज दैट देर शुड बी नो ट्रेड बैरियर्स दैट इज मेंबर ऑफ वर्ल्ड ट्रेड शुड लिबरलाइज द ट्रेड पॉलिसी एंड ट्रेड बिटवीन द कंट्रीज नाउ दे वॉन्ट दैट एवरी कंट्री शुड डू नो एवरी कंट्री शुड ट्रेड फ्रीली एवरी कंट्री शुड ट्रेड फ्रीली एंड देर शुड बी नो ट्रेड बैरियर्स बट इन प्रैक्टिस इट कैन बी सीन दैट developing countries follow these rules where the uh, the developed countries have not liberalized their trade policy why the developing countries follow these it is because the developing countries really want to trade like india is a developing country but it is said that developed countries should also liberalize their trade but developed countries does not do that they fake it they fake it out because they say we have liberalized our trade but they do not do it actually why they do not do it actually because see what happens when we liberalize trade when we liberalize trade which means that import now come to that point where i have written that okay okay limit on exports this is the trade barrier tax applied on imp imports limit on the exports okay so when when the trade barriers are removed there is no limit on export you can export whatever you want okay you can there is no uh, apply tax on import you can uh, the country the other country can see when we are taking things from outside that is called import so when a developing country okay suppose india is a developing country so when a developing country takes a lot of imports a lot of you know imports a lot of lot of uh, products so what other countries are doing the developed countries you know throwing a lot of products why they are throwing because for them there is for the country developed country they they have a very good surplus they have very good extra income because if it gets uh, you know like this it's kept in the country it will get wasted so they throw out things in the developing countries so when they throwing country uh, the, uh, throwing their products in developing countries the developing countries definitely instead of producing instead of producing in their own country they take from outside and when they import a lot when they import a lot when we take things from the other countries a lot what happens we do not produce in our country so our so our you capacity gets zero because at a low cost we are taking from outside because they have a lot in surplus they are throwing at a very cheaper rate and we are getting it so this happens with only developing countries okay next okay so this is a very big problem it is seen that developed countries do not liberalize their trade and developing countries do now the government of india trying to attract more foreign investment through following ways that is a special economic zone because developing country like india we want to get a lot of production done in our country as well as we want to compete outside also so government are creating ses ses means special economic zones what does it has it has world class facilities for electricity roads water transport recreation and education facilities so we are attract a lot of foreign investors mnc will not have to pay taxes for initial period so this is government does so they do not have to pay taxes and the when and definitely because uh, mnc is very brainy mnc want at very low cost so we attract them we are attracting who we are attracting mnc if they set up their units in scs as this says means special economic zones flexibility in labor laws government has given the permission okay government has given permission to the mnc to hire workers flexibly that is hiring the workers on temporary basis and also ignoring the labor laws 
this will have the mnc in reducing the labor cost and the total cost of the production but with this point when we have given flexibility in labor laws we are harming our labor we are harming our labor we are on one side attracting mncs but our labor get disturbed so the last point of this chapter whereby we see the major problem created by the globalization is for the large number of small producers and workers because of the flexibility we are giving to mnc it is harming our labor so small producers the local small producers are not able to compete with mnc they have to shut down their business this is a very big problem happening in india as well mnc definitely gives us a lot of benefits but there are also some of the disadvantage and disadvantages here it is mainly due to the following factors lack of new technology mnc brings technology but at present if we see mnc brings a lot of new technology but local producers will not have mncs have huge wealth to influence the price in the market condition they can influence the market as well because they have a lot of power money right then workers due to the globalization the mncs don't hire workers on permanent basis they use flexibility labor law policy and flexibility labor law policy harms our harms our labor laws on one hand we are attracting on one hand the government is attracting on the other hand deteriorating our government deteriorating our labor our skilled and unskilled labor okay so apart from that definitely we have advantages and disadvantages for the globalization i hope you understand the chapter really well and some of the questions these last were the question and answers whereby i explained you with the question and answers i hope these were the answers and will help you to write four marker or five markers and you will fetch more marks with this i complete my lecture till then children we have one more uh, chapter left for one shot in economics that is consumer right we will complete our coursework for the economics then we will be having four to uh, yes four to five chapters in political science and definitely we will complete our coursework on time all right children let's meet in the next lecture till then study smart always and my blessings are with you thank you children i feel very grateful to uh, to teach ignite batch and i hope there are so many my old students of udan Udan reloaded who have studied from me uh, from past two years they were studying and I feel very grateful there's lots of students who are in eleventh or ninth they have gone to twelve they come back to see my video and they say ma'am I am Vashnavi I am particular this child and ma'am we remember you thank you for that this is purely your love which I get and which makes all the teachers not only me. Motivate that we should teach more with more enthusiasm and which with more creativity. and i feel very grateful thank you so much children see you in the next lecture and see you next time and your uh, dh the questions dtp the questions which we gave you they will be available on the app you might go ignite batch you can take the uh, lectures after the lecture you can take the lecture notes you can take the lecture questions from the app from the pw app all right bye bye children and that is definitely free of cost all right bye bye children see you next time in the next lecture